Southwest 3260 only tired, runway 24 right to line. Hello everyone and welcome to the CAT 4 rating. This is the fourth flight in the communication and airspace training program on the Pilot Edge network. Now the CAT 4 is an interesting one because it's really going to start to put everything that you've learned together. Today we're flying from a class Delta airport down to another class Delta airport. So we're going to be talking to two different control towers, but no ATC between the two airports. So if we think back to the CAT 1, we flew without talking to anyone. That's really what it's going to be between their two airports today. In the CAT-2, we came into a class Delta airport. We came right here into San Luis Obispo airport, talked to the tower. We're going to use those skills when we head into Santa Maria airport today. We'll be talking to a tower to land. In the CAT-3, we learned all about how to taxi out and taxi in and work with the tower as far as getting a takeoff clearance. Now, the only thing you really haven't done yet is take off out of an airport with a tower and depart the airspace entirely. Thankfully, that's a very easy thing to do. We're going to discuss it in just a few minutes. So if you have not read the textual portion of the CAT 4 yet on this page, make sure you check that out. Take a look at your learning objectives and flying the rating, everything you need to know before you get started. And then this video will help you out and put it in a little more perspective. We're going to switch over to Sky Vector and take a look at our flight plan today. It says 22 nautical miles from point to point. That's from San Luis Obispo Airport down to Santa Maria Airport. The first thing that jumps out at me about this flight is the restricted area here. This is R2516. There's really no reason that we would need to get anywhere close to this. Um, maybe the only reason I would say that I would even consider it is if we were going to consider just navigating via the shoreline and maybe coming in from the west. But obviously due to the restricted area, we're not going to worry about that. Now, the restricted area can be hot and cold. And in fact, there is a chart supplement on the sectional that will tell us the altitudes and sometimes even the use times of the restricted area. But we're not going to look at that today. We'll look at that a little bit more later down the road on the CAT 6 rating. But for now, the restricted area isn't going to become a factor today. We just need to make sure that we miss it entirely. And that's exactly what we're going to do. For our navigation today, we're going to plug in the Guadalupe VOR. But mainly, I'm actually going to try and follow this highway here. So we're going to see how that goes here in Flight Simulator 2020. This highway runs pretty much just due south of San Luis Obispo Airport, cuts due east of Oceano. You'll recognize that from the Cat 1 rating. And then just comes just due east of Santa Maria Airport. So if all goes well, we'll be right over the highway. We're going to cruise at 3,500 feet. And we'll just dunk in over the city of Santa Maria here. You can see the city as it's the yellow shows you a populated area on the sectional chart. And we'll just come right in over the city and get our pattern entry from Santa Maria Tower. Now because so much of today's rating is sort of review from the CATS 1 through 3 ratings, we're not going to go through a whole lot of prep. We're just going to kind of get up and go. You'll see I'm in the Baron again today. And remember, I'm not a real world Baron or twin pilot. So take everything you see with a grain of salt as far as the operation of the aircraft. What I'm trying to teach you today is how to navigate airspace and talk to air traffic control. But regardless, we do need to do some quick cockpit setup and we're going to go over to our airport diagram. We need our frequencies to start, so we're going to first start by tuning our ATIS on 120.6. It's always important to have a pen and paper ready whenever you fly, but specifically at the beginning of your flight so you can write down the important information out of the ATIS. San Luis County Regional Airport, ATIS Information Foxtrot, arriving and departing runway 29er. Advise on initial contact you have information Foxtrot. Okay, so I added out part of the ATIS there because you've already heard it in some of the previous CAT ratings. You should already be familiar with that. If you're not, you can refer back to the CAT 2 rating where we discussed all about the contents of the ATIS. All right, we'll bring up our chart once more here, and San Luis Ground is going to be on 121.6, so we'll get that ready. And I don't want to tune it quite yet because I don't want to have ATC playing quite yet just so we can finish our briefing. Today we're parked over here on the east hangar, so it's going to be a real quick taxi out to runway 29. Uh, I heard that runway 29 is in use in the ATIS, so that's confirmed. And we can expect Alpha out to runway 29er. And Alpha will just be right out ahead of us off the nose. And runway 29er is right there. So that's our holding point. So real quick taxi today. Back into the chart we go. And we're done with that for the moment. Now as far as the flight planning goes, we're, we can expect a likely a left downwind departure. Um, now, if we do get assigned a downwind departure, 
it'll be different than when we've departed the non-towered airports. So the tower will actually give us some sort of departure instruction. They might just tell us that our left turn on course is approved. They might tell us a left turn to the south is approved because we're going to make that request. We're going to request the VFR departure to the south today. That's what our request is going to be when we call ground and we'll get to that in just a minute. But regardless of how they tell us to leave the pattern, it might be a make a left cross on departure. That's how we're going to exit the pattern. Regardless of how we get out of the pattern, we'll eventually leave the class delta airspace. Now remember the class delta airspace is defined by this blue dash line here. You can click the link at the top right of the video if you want to learn more about airspace and what all these symbols mean that you see in front of you. Now I'm going to do a quick distance reading here. Okay, four miles is the uh, four to five miles is a typical radius of a class delta airport. So four miles around uh, the airport or 2,000. 700 feet so if we get above 2700 feet or more than four miles away from the airport we are then clear of the airspace now unless the tower gives us further instructions as far as remain on its frequency or contact this other controller if we have no other instructions once you are clear of a class delta airspace now this is only for class delta this does not apply for charlie's or bravos once you are clear of class delta airspace then you can change frequencies on your own you do not have to get frequency change approved. Sometimes the tower will tell you frequency change approved. And if the tower does tell you that frequency change approved, it can either be just because it's an early frequency change. So either you could request the early frequency change or tower might just say, hey, I've got nothing out there, frequency change approved, if they just want to let you, let you go early. Or uh, it might just be a courtesy to you, frequency change approved. It's not necessary for them to tell you that, but if you get it, then you can change frequencies early. Otherwise, you need to stay on tower frequency until you leave the airspace. Once again, in this instance, it is once we climb above 2,700 feet on our way to our cruise altitude today of 3,500, or once we leave that four mile radius, which is known as the class Delta airspace. While we're at it, we're gonna brief our arrival into Santa Maria because it's such a short flight, especially here in the Barren. It's got a little bit of speed to it. So as I briefed, we're going to attempt to follow this road here. We're gonna pick up this highway. It's gonna cut us east a little bit, which is fine because we gotta head to the southeast. And a good uh, reference point will be this body of water here. It looks like a large river or maybe a thin lake. So we're gonna look for that on our way down there. And uh, by that point, we should also probably see the airport, but just in case we don't, that's a good reference point. Now, I'm also gonna plug in the Guadalupe VOR on 111.0, and that's just more so just gonna be a backup for me today. And always try and have a, a backup plan just in case the weather starts getting bad and uh, the road isn't as easy to see or follow. Got a little backup plan there. Finally, we're gonna talk about our arrival into Santa Maria as far as the pattern entry goes. So uh, we don't know what runway Santa Maria is using at the moment. We can't pick up the ATIS from the ground, but we're just gonna plan several different scenarios. So we're coming in from the Northwest. So if we were to be assigned runway one, two, it'd just be an easy straight in. If we'd be assigned runway three, zero, they'd likely give us a right downwind. Remember, it's right turns. It doesn't have to do with the side of the airport that we're on. The difference as to joining the pattern with a tower versus a non-towered airport is that you're not always going to join that 45 downwind. You're going to join the pattern how they want you to. So if they just tell you to make straight in runway one, two, you're just going to join the straight in final, the runway one, two. It's that simple. Finally, while we're here, we're going to have our runway turnoff plan in the back of our head. We're gonna be parking right at the base of the tower today, just here off of Alpha 6, Alpha 5. So that means if we land 3-0, we're gonna try and catch probably Alpha 4. If we land 1-2, we'll probably catch Alpha 5, and it's just gonna be a real quick taxi in. All right, so that's our plan for now. Now, don't forget to file your flight plan on the Pilot Edge Network, as you need to do with all CAT ratings. Check that box 13, indicate you are performing a CAT 4 rating attempt. Now, let's do a little bit of final cockpit setup here. We are going to turn our transponder to the altitude mode. And remember that doesn't really do anything in Flight Simulator 2020 or Lockheed Martin's prepared. So we're also gonna to have to go to the pilot client, make sure that mode C button is pressed. If you are in X plane, you can use your transponder as normal. However, you want your code to be 1200 regardless, make sure your altimeter is set correctly per the ATIS. And we're also going to get our tower frequency ready on 124.0. So back in the cockpit. Okay, 124.0 is set. So we got ground on the active, tower on the standby. And now we are ready to taxi. So remember, it's always going to be who we're calling, who we are, where we are, our request, and the ATIS code. It was ATIS Foxtrot. I've got that uh, written down in front of me. So we are ready to go whenever we can get a uh, transmission in here. 
San Luis Ground, Baron 210 Pop Echo, East Side Hangers, Taxi for South Departure with information Foxtrot. And this is for the Cat 4 rating. 210 Papa Echo, San Luis Ground, runway 2, at 9 or Taxi via Alpha. 2 9 via Alpha, Baron 0 Pop Echo. Okay, 2 9 via no, Alpha. That is exactly what we expected. Number 1041, Joe. Okay, we're at the holding point for runway 29 and as you remember from the Cat 3, this is the only time that we're going to switch over without being told to do so. Every other time, once we take the runway and beyond, minus that leaving the class Delta airspace we're going to do today, you always need permission to switch frequencies. So, we're going to swap over to tower, we're on 124.0. Send those tower, Baron 210 Pop Echo, holding short of runway 29 south departure. Number 210, Papa Echo, San Luis Tower, wind calm, runway 29, cleared for takeoff, proceed on course. On course, clear takeoff, runway 29, Baron 0, Papa Echo. All right, the Four final looks Delta, clear, and Delta. here we go. Thanks very much, 600 Delta, good day. Lights are up. See ya. So, as you heard him say, proceed on course. So, that just allows us to make a left turn on course. It's, uh, it, it's going to be the quickest turn uh, that is possible. So we wouldn't make a right turn on course because that would be the long way around. So it's just going to be a left turn on course and that'll bring us uh, kind of due south. That'll take us out to the shoreline, hopefully pick up that road from there. Go away, tower, Grumman, 81041. Hold it for 20 at kilo. All right, power set. Number 81041, Joe Wayne Tower, wind 2104, runway 20 right at kilo, cleared for takeoff. 20 right at kilo, cleared for takeoff. Gear up. And we're going to begin our left turn out on course. Now in this instance, if you recall the class delta up to and including 2,700 feet, because we're in the barren, we've got some good climb power, we're likely going to leave the airspace vertically before we do laterally. So I'm not really even concerned about paying attention to that four mile radius because I know that we are climbing at a very good rate. We're at 2,300 feet a minute now. And we are going to, uh, we're up through 1,900 feet already. So we're gonna be through that 2,700 foot mark in just a moment here. We're gonna roll out on about a 160 heading. That'll take us out to the shoreline, hopefully pick up that road through 2,300 feet now. So we're still on the tower frequency as we are still well in their airspace. There's the airport down there. All right, there's 2,700 feet. So we have left the class Delta airspace. So we talk about how you cannot switch from tower to ground on your own when you land, but you can switch from ground to tower when you're about to take off. And this is about the only other time you can switch off a of control frequency on your own. So we're gonna do just that. We're gonna actually switch over to guard for the time being. We've talked about guard in different videos. That's 121.5. And we're just going to monitor that for now. We're going to level off here at 3,500 feet. We'll be looking for that highway. Now, the only other time, I guess there are three different instances where you can switch frequencies on your own. And the first one being what we just did. When you depart a Class Delta airport and you're not receiving any sort of flight following, you're just leaving the airspace and that's it. Um, the other two times would be when you're switching from ground to tower. That's all the time whenever you're short of your assigned departure runway, unless obviously unless ground has told you otherwise. And then the third and final time would be if you are on clearance delivery, and you'll actually be contacting clearance delivery later on in the CAT ratings to pick up VFR flight following. And when you do that, you go from clearance to ground on your own, just as you would go from ground to tower on your own. So clearance to ground is on your own, ground to tower is on your own, and then VFR, departing the area with no flight following out of a class Delta airspace, you switch on your own. If you're ever unsure, just ask. Just ask the tower or if it's okay to switch frequencies. You can, in a more professional way, you can say request frequency change. Um, and that will uh, usually prompt a frequency change approved. So I believe that this road down here is our highway to follow. We're gonna scooch up in our chair slightly and dip the wing a little bit. We should have Oceano Airport off of our right. There it is. So that's where the cat ratings all began. That's where y'all began the cat one from. Okay, so we're level here at 3,500 and we are following our highway 
which is right down here. And look at that. I can already see what I believe to be that body of water we were talking about earlier out there. If we bring up our sectional again, it's going to be that thin little body of water that intersects the highway just north of the town of Santa Maria. So I believe that uh, that's what I'm looking at. And we got plenty of visibility, so even if for, for whatever reason we're wrong, we will have plenty to go off of to get us over to Santa Maria. In fact, I would bet that that runway approach light is actually Santa Maria Airport. So we'll see as we get a little closer. Get a little higher out to now, so we're going to dip down slightly. And let's start discussing our arrival into Santa Maria. So back into the charts we go, and we need to look at uh, the frequencies for Santa Maria, 121.15, that is the Santa Maria ATIS, and that is going to be the first frequency that we need to tune up and uh, listen to. So let's do that now, 121.15. Okay, that's set. Santa Maria Public Airport. Well, we caught the beginning of the ATIS, lucky us. One Zulu, arriving and departing runway 30. Read back all runway assignments and hold short instructions. Advise on initial contact. You have information kilo. Okay, information kilo. And uh, I trimmed the ATIS for a little bit for you guys in the post production just so it would be a little bit quicker video. Again, if you needed more help on the ATIS, go ahead and check out the Cat 2 video. It talks all about the ATIS and what's in it. So back to the charts we go. We need several other frequencies to get ready here. 118.3 for the tower and 121.9 for ground. So we're going to get both those in now. So the first one we need is 118.3 for San Lu Santa Maria Tower, 18.3. And 121.9 we'll have on the standby, just because it's always good to get ahead of the aircraft. So we've got that ready whenever we touch down. Now remember we have our plan already for when we touch down. The ATA says they're landing runway 30. So we can expect a right down for 30 most likely. Regardless of our traffic pattern entry, we're going to be landing runway 30. We expect maybe an Alpha 6 or what we planned before, an Alpha 4 turn off. We'll try and catch Alpha 6, but I'm more thinking it's going to be Alpha 4. And then we're parking at the base of the tower. And as we get closer, I think it is certain that those approach lights we saw earlier are the Santa Maria Airport. But we're going to continue with our plan from before and follow our road for now. Now remember, I'll bring the airport diagram down for a second. So we are approaching the body of water along the highway. So we're right around here. And remember, we've got our class Delta airspace that is here it's going to be four miles again ground, uh, and what right when we cross that body of water will probably be about five or six miles so that'd be a good way to a good way to for us to know when it'd be time to call the tower uh, additionally as long as we keep it above 2800 remember the tower owns 2800 feet as long as we keep it above 2800 we will not bust their airspace two eight right via hotel alpha 172 zero papa Santa Maria Tower, Baron 210 Pop Echo, five miles to the north, inbound to land with Kilo. 210 Pop Echo, Santa Maria Tower, and a right down on runway 30, report midfield. Right down on runway 30, report midfield, Baron 0 Pop Echo, and this is for the Cat 4. 956 Hotel Papa, Santa Maria Ground. Okay, so we were instructed to enter right down on runway 30, and remember that it's only right turns. Once we're in the pattern, yeah, the right downwind doesn't have anything to do with which side of the airport we're on. Left side of the airport, right side of the airport, doesn't matter. What it means is right turn. So now, granted, we are going to be entering the downwind on the 45. And that's contrary to what I was saying before, in that when I was talking about non-towered airports, I was saying you always enter the downwind on the 45. But at a towered airport, sometimes you might enter a base, sometimes you'll enter straight in. In this case, they told us to enter downwind. Whenever you are entering a downwind, you're gonna enter on the 45. So here we go, entering the downwind on the 45 degree. This is gonna be our only left turn. Once we have joined the downwind, we will be only making right turns in the traffic pattern. If your transmission is shorter than the two transmissions, just make it all in one transmission. Van Nuys clearance, stand by. So we're joining the right downwind now. And we will report midfield in just a moment. Got the airport off our right. Tower, Baron Zero Pop Echo, midfield down. Zero Pop Echo, runway 30, clear to land, wind 3006. 
to land 30, Baron 0, Pop Echo. Okay, we are clear to land on runway 30, which uh, we are abeam those numbers right now. So we're going to start pulling the power back slightly, and we're going to drop the gear. Speed for 100, taxi to your gate via Bravo. Have a good day. Keep an eye on the airport, waiting for it to be off our 45 to the right. And still got another few seconds there. It looks good. The base turn looks clear. And clear left as well. Here we go. Turn a base. And we're... I think we're a little bit tight, so we're just going to keep the final turn going all the way around here so we don't overshoot. Taking a quick glance to the left, no one out there. Keep that base turn going. Montgomery Tower, Cessna 1720, pop uh, holding short, runway 2A right, awaiting IFR release. 1720, pop it. 1720, pop it, Montgomery Tower, wind 2808, runway 28 right, clear takeoff. Clear for takeoff, 28 right, 1720, pop it. All right, and we're going to make our turn here. That's actually going to be the reverse, so we'll take the forward high speed. Right. And we clear those hold bars. Perfect. Flaps three coming zero, up. Clear Lights. Takeoff, clear out departure. Six hotel pop. Thanks. Baron zero pop. Echo taxi parking via Alpha monitor ground. Have a good day. Text the parking monitor ground. Baron zero pop. Uh, echo via Alpha. Two zero pop. Contact departure. All right, we're going to monitor ground. Contact so we're we'll switch over to one two one point nine. But monitor is very different than contact. So monitor two, means Lima, just listen, but do not call. And the reason we do this is just so we are on the ground frequency in case the ground controller needs us. But the tower has already coordinated with ground, or in this case, it's actually the same controller working both positions. So in this case, in the tower, if they were to split off positions, for instance, if a ground controller were to plug in and take the ground from the tower, then we would be on the appropriate controller's frequency. So they're just kind of setting it up that way, just kind of as a fail safe for the system, just so we are in the right place if someone needs to get a hold of us. That's the difference between contact and monitor. We're just going to come to a stop here on the ramp and set our parking brake. Victorville Ground, Tessa, November 634, Charlie Zulu. And now remember, we still haven't gotten uh, our passing grade or our non-passing grade for the CAT4 rating. Yes, sir. So we need to make sure okay, that we uh, receive that before we disconnect from the network. To the, uh, and right to the just east. in case he forgot about us, we're going to let him know. Okay, and unfortunately, the recording software didn't pick up the passing grade for the exam, but the controller did just tell us that we passed the rating. So we are all set there. And welcome to Santa Maria. That's the CAT4. We hope you enjoyed departing and arriving into a Class Delta airport. Join us for the CAT 5, which we're going to pick up flight following between two Class Delta airports. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you on the CAT 5.